They say sailing is the most expensive way to get anywhere for free. I'm going to set myself a little challenge during this shift. Wahoo! I very nearly threw the hand reeling. Oh yeah, there's some weather coming right in. Please do not be offended if we're holding the song around. Fish on as we came out. Ping, the other line went as well. That is ginormous. I'm going to argue that we are doing 400 miles across the Caribbean Sea for free. In other news, land home. Seas. We set sail from Cariacou in Grenada and headed west across the Caribbean Sea towards Bonaire. We had an incredibly easy first couple of days on passage, flying the spinnaker and just bobbing along with the wind. In fact, it was so good that we actually live streamed some of our passage using Starlink. We managed to drastically improve our fishing luck and caught three mahi in one day, which we cooked and ate for dinner. Things were going well until we had some trouble getting the spinnaker down one night. And then we started to go mad as we thought we were seeing things and had to dodge some pirates in the dark. Now we continue on our journey as the sun rises on day three of our passage. to day three of our passage now. We had a super boring night, absolutely nothing happened, which I love. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going along quite slowly under Genoa at the moment. We're both kind of struggling with sleep and not sleeping properly. I had a little bit more than Ian. Um, so yeah, he's just gone down just now. Oh, the wind is shifting. So yeah, Ian's just gone down to sleep just now. Um, he always finds it harder to sleep during the day when the sun comes up. So I've just like pegged a towel out to try and block some of the sunrise from his eyes and see if that helps. Uh, we've been kind of working on six hour shifts, which works quite well for us. Um, but with a few things happening and changing sails and catching fish and thinking we saw pirates, uh, then we've both been up slightly longer than we had intended and our shifts have kind of slipped. So we're not eating meals at regular times. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's not quite in a routine yet. I really like this morning shift because I usually would start, well, we try and start at like 2 a.m. I run two till eight. Um, and so I do a few hours in the dark and then around six, five or six, when the sun comes up, I suddenly get like an extra burst of energy from, oh, the day has started, this is fine now. Um, so that's what we're trying to stick to. I think this will be our last day of passage, our last full day. I think we're gonna to arrive tomorrow. We're just kind of heading past Los Roques on the left. So. Uh, the temptation not to swing in and see it because it sounds amazing. Uh, yeah, it's quite high, but we will hold our course. We'll go around the top of it and uh, yeah, should reach Bonaire tomorrow morning, maybe. set myself a little challenge during this shift. Uh, so we're going to arrive in Bonaire tomorrow and we don't have a courtesy flag to fly when we arrive. So I'm going to try and make one. I've got my little sewing machine. I've got some fabric. We'll see if I've got all the right colors. <laughs> and hopefully it'll turn out vaguely similar to uh, what the flag is supposed to look like. So these are the basic colors that we need for the flag. It's basically just uh, a blue triangle with a white stripe and another wee bit of yellow in the corner. There's some other details to go on later, but I will deal with that when I've managed the first part. Uh, I'm going to try and do it as quietly as possible so that I don't wake up Ian. So uh, I'll see if I can just turn the wheel by hand or if I need to go and find wherever I've stashed the foot pedal. But uh, yeah, here goes. Yeah, that's way too slow. I don't have the patience for that. Sorry, Ian. I'm going to go electric. I 
think I'm pretty much done. I'm just sewing on the last little bit so that we can actually attach the flag onto the line. But, ta-da! I'm finished. And just in time, because Ian has just woken up. <laughs> what do you think? That is cool. Look at that. So, I that way up, right? Well, that's what I couldn't quite remember. I think the colors are right, but I had to do it all from memory because Starlink has turned off and it might be... We might be about to offend an entire nation. Yeah. <laughs> um, we probably, if you're from Bonaire or have some affiliation, please do not be offended if we're holding this wrong around. Brandy has very strategically handed this to me to present to all of you. So I'm just gonna keep doing this until we know which way it's supposed to be. I think it's, uh, I'll just I think it's this way, but I'm like, maybe I got like the red and the yellow the wrong way around or... Hopefully it'll be high enough up a mast. That's what I'm thinking. Like, it's going to be far enough away that you're not really going to be able to see the details. The star is definitely a little bit wonky as well, but I think it'll be fine. It's representative. <laughs> a bit heavy. Is it going to be okay? Is it going to fly? spinnaker up and then we looked behind us and we were like oh oh yeah there's some weather coming right in so we had to like sock it straight away just as the rain started and uh it's yeah. suddenly quite heavy that paid off well i think yeah uh, we're not seeing huge amounts of wind though but i don't think i'd have loved flying a spinnaker in 20 knots no Ooh. i don't think it's gonna last very long so we can put it back up again right after but uh yeah looks a little bit wild Mahi, mahi or tuna, what are we going for? Uh, no, I want a wahoo, please. Wahoo, okay. Wahoo! I very nearly threw the hand reel in. <laughs> I was more concerned that you were going to throw the hook and it was going to catch me. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> Breakfast come to me. How good would it be if that was as easy as it was? Not going to work. As you might be able to tell from the rushing noise of water behind us, I woke up this morning and we both threw up the spinnaker, uh, which we affectionately called the Kraken. And we are heading along, I think we have about nine to 11 knots apparent on the boat, and we are flying at seven and a half knots. It's a really good feeling. Uh, the wind is actually just past our, our aft, so it's about 170, 160 degrees off our port quarter, but uh, we are just flying, we really are. And I thought we should explain a little bit about the Kraken because I'm not sure if we've ever told you the backstory here. Um, the Kraken, which is just the name we give it, it's just a spinnaker. It's a symmetrical spinnaker, or some people call them a cruising chute. It's slightly wider than the width of the hulls at its foot, and then it's just a big balloon shape. So it just fills out and pulls us along. So we're literally chasing a kite in that sense. But uh, when we got Indy, she, as we call her, she is our rescue cat. She was a charter boat, ex-charter boat, ex-charter boat, ex-charter boat, then us. So uh, we've been looking after her, putting her back together. And when we, we finally met her, there was no mention of a spinnaker on the inventory. The inventory was pretty sparse. I mean, it was like, you know, has a radio. Um, but there was no mention of this bad boy. So they say sailing is the most expensive way to get anywhere for free. I'm going to argue that we are doing 400 miles across the Caribbean Sea for free because we didn't technically pay for this. It doesn't exist, apparently. And, you know, there's a compromise. The Kraken is full of holes and at any moment is going to explode. But uh, as a very wise people, more wise than me, would say, if you didn't pay for it, every time you use it, it's technically making you money. It's we haven't spent any money on this yet, which means if we enjoy it, we can be saving up to replace the Kraken, perhaps when we have enough money together we could potentially buy one but these things are expensive like like eight to ten thousand dollars expensive and that's not money we have set aside um 
all we do is make YouTube videos and creations for Patreon and things like that. So, you know, we're not really rolling in cash. And uh, so it's just such a lucky, such a blessing to have this guy ready and waiting to drag us along at seven and a half, eight knots. And yeah, you just don't have to think. It's so easy. So yeah, that's been my morning. Sit back, let the Kraken do the work, and uh, I guess I'm gonna watch some TV or read a book. It's a hard life, it really is. We were just debating what time we should take the spinnaker down, and then suddenly, ping! We were like, oh, fish on! As we came out, ping! The other line went as well. So I'm gonna guess it's two mahi, because they seem to kind of travel in pairs, so we'll see if we can get them on board. Okay. Whoa, there is quite a pull. Yeah, he is a strong one. He's putting up quite a fight, but every time one of the bigger waves comes, I can kind of, some of the tension comes off the line and I can pull it in a little bit quicker. Right, what do we have? It doesn't look as yellow as the mahis. A tuna maybe, which was my guess from how much it was fighting. I think so. Tuna! Ready? Wow, he is a big fellow. He's huge. Look at this. Wow. Yeah. Up one step. One, two, three, go. And again. And again. We're on, we're on. Wow. That's a huge fish. That is ginormous. Okay, now fish number two. Let's see what we've got. There's definitely something on there. So it hasn't spat the hook. Is it another tuna? I think it might be from its fin shape. It's kind of dark now, but you can just about see it. So we'll see if we can land this one as well. Wow. Well, as you can hear, the iron sails have been deployed. Yeah, I got to about six o'clock this morning. I'd been on for a couple of hours and then the wind just vanished. But in other news, land ho. Yes, we've actually made it. We have arrived, well, almost arrived in Bonaire. It's actually kind of funny because we're coming in on the south side of Bonaire. So there's this little tower you might be able to see in the distance over here. That's actually a lighthouse. That marks the south end of the island. So the plan is we're going to scoot our way around the south end and then swing up into the mooring field, which is on the back side of the island. At least that's the plan. But uh, yeah, it was overall quite an easygoing night. We got our shift patterns all messed up. Um, when we caught all those fish at the end of the day, basically it resulted in both Briny and I doing two 12-hour shifts crossed over by six hours. So the dealing with the fish, getting them on board, preparing food and everything else took basically six hours in between. So I, I was on for six hours, we were both on for six hours, and Brenny was on for six hours, so uh, she was pretty exhausted when I came up this morning and took over about four or five, five in the morning, I think it was. Uh, but yeah, sadly, with no wind, it means we're not sailing into a glorious Bonaire under full canvas, but hey ho, at least we get there in time. What's been really amazing, if you've not been following along, we actually managed to do a bunch of live streams all the way here. Um, weirdly, Starlink has worked flawlessly the whole way, which it shouldn't, it's not meant to. Um, yeah, according to the official coverage when it comes to Starlink, there is no coverage down near Venezuela. Uh, I think Bonaire is supposed to come online later this year. Uh, maybe check me on that. Um, but yeah, we've basically been able to do, I think we did two or three live streams to YouTube just because we thought, why not? It'd be fun. So that might bode well for some future sailing. I think we might get into, uh, I don't know. I think we might do some slow TV live or something like that. I don't know, let us know if that's worth doing, if it'd be interesting or just boring. Uh, if we're sitting through it and we edit it to make it interesting for you guys, maybe you don't want to have to sit through just watching a boat wobble around. But maybe you do. I don't know. Well, I'm not going to lie, this isn't the uh, welcome I was expecting. <laughs> this little bit of a squall has come rolling in just as we finally approached the south end of the island. So, um, yeah, things are getting wet. actually here we did it it's it's real it's a real place it turns out i can see land and everything <laughs> it's so exciting so that is 
Is that the longest passage we've ever done? Yeah, it ticked over 400 nautical miles last night. Oh, wow. And that was our longest passage down to Grenada. So it's Jeez. almost four days. That is not bad. So yeah, Ooh. and of all that, I think we've only had to run the engines twice. When we set yeah, off, we set for, a bit, off for now. And now as we come into port, that is not bad going. I think that means we timed our weather window quite well then. Yeah, we meandered. We weren't speedy fast. No. But oh. it's been like so calm for the last like two months. It's been but, ridiculous. Um, yeah, it was quite difficult to pick a window of when to go. So I think we did it right. Pretty good passage. Good job. Yeah. One thing that we forgot to say, because I'm celebrating all the good stuff that's happened until now. What are you not telling me? <laughs> well, they might not actually let us into the country. <laughs> yes, we this is an issue. We <laughs> have to sail on for another day. Um, so Bonaire is strange. The whole place is a marine park. So we should say too late if we're just arriving. Be nice. <laughs> we love you. You're it's great. It's a lovely place. Um, they're super protective of the environment and the area, which is great, but it means there's absolutely no anchoring allowed. So the only way that you can come here is to either go into a marina or to take a mooring ball. Um, and we can't fit in the marina. No, there's only a couple of marinas. One of them doesn't take any cats at all. I phoned the other marina just before we set off and they were like, oh, we've only got space for a couple of cats and we've already got some until November. So, so yeah, we can't work. go into that one and you, you're not allowed to book the mooring bowls. So we're just sort of turning up and hoping that there are some available. I know it's been a busy season. Yeah, although, so there was like a regatta, like a gathering race event. Oh yeah. Last week or the week before or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that a lot of the boats that came in for that have now moved on and that there'll be space for us somewhere in among all the moorings. Um, I don't know what to do if there's not. We literally won't be allowed to come in and we'll just yeah, have to just go have to, to a different country. Carry on. <laughs> Basically, if there's no mooring balls, this episode will go on for an extra country. Uh, another 20 minutes. Ready, guys? <laughs> 20 minutes for you is like a day and a bit for us. I can't so It's a while away. Curacao. Curacao? Cur Curacao is the next country over. And we're hoping that we don't have to go all the way there. Yeah. Because then we'll want to come back someday and see the diving and everything else. But if we're lucky, there'll be space for us. We'll be able yeah. to jump on in here and we can go on an adventure. Positive thinking. It's all going to be fine. It's going to be fine. The last four days have been amazing. So today is going to just continue that trend. Yeah. Yeah, or we'll just tie onto the back of another boat that's already oh, there. we go. Boat. We'll just raft up to someone and make good friends. Easy. So let's just see how that works out. <laughs> okay. All right, confession time. When we were in Karyaku, we went to a thing called a circus cafe, which is awesome, by the way. Uh, and they have all this stuff that you can try out. So we were like jumping on the slack line, having a go at juggling. There was a trapeze. It was all going on. Um, and of course, I tried this sort of balance wobble board thing, like a ball on top of a rolly, uh, sorry, a board on top of a rolly thing. And you have to try and balance it and not fall off. And of course, I fell off and uh, landed on my wrist, which was quite painful. So it's been okay. I've been kind of looking after it, but after bringing in those tuna yesterday, it was really getting quite sore. So I have stuck a wrist guard on it and just thought I should explain it in case you saw it. And you were like, what on earth is that? Might be useful. Okay, I mean, we're approaching a new country and we don't know much about it yet, but there is a freaking pirate ship that we are racing to a mooring ball. Uh, and he's just cheekily put his sail up so that he's technically under sail and has right of way. But uh, seriously, a pirate ship? Come on. 